These are things you realize as soon as you buy a MacBook. Let's get started. Number one, everything feels premium. As soon as you buy a MacBook, you immediately feel like the design is next level. It's actually hard to believe you just bought something so premium. Getting a MacBook doesn't just feel like a purchase, it feels like a privilege. The trackpad feels insanely smooth, the speakers sound incredible, and the overall design is clean and beautiful. But the most important part is, it's not just the quality of the product that makes you feel this way, it's the authority that comes with it. MacBooks are the kind of product people go for instead of gaming laptops or even build PCs. Even though PCs and gaming laptops are often cheaper and way more powerful. Sure, there are people who say MacBooks are just overpriced garbage. And yeah, I sometimes agree with that. But still, Still, you can't deny the recognition it's got and the fact that millions of people have keep choosing it. So feeling like you made a big deal purchase is totally normal. And honestly, I get it. Apple knows what they are doing. They're not just selling a device, they are selling a feeling. They are branding experts. When you hear Apple, the first thing you picture is something expensive, something luxurious. Not like the crowd stuck using dusty old PCs. Sarcasm, by the way, I've been a PC guy since forever. But don't let it get to your head too much. That high, it doesn't last forever. Reality hits soon after and it's not all sunshine and butterflies. Number 2. Your wallet is still crying. Alright, you bought your MacBook, maybe you didn't even get it on a payment plan or credit, which is still kinda rare, but regardless of how you paid for it, your wallet is now crying, like actually gasping for air. You're now in save every penny mode for at least the rest of the month, maybe even the year, depends on your income. I don't know if you're rich, but if I go by my own budget, I'm definitely cooked. My bank wouldn't even let me get an installment plan. Like, no bro, you're not paying this off, stop dreaming. Especially since I recently quit my job and I'm not in a rush to find a new one either. But hey, if you're rich, good for you. I'm just assuming most people watching are students, like me. Especially my audience since I make videos on stuff that's actually useful for students. But still interesting enough not to bore everyone else to death. So yeah, might as well consider subscribing. Anyway, back to the MacBook. They're stupid expensive. Even the cheapest model like the MacBook Air M1 from 2020 with 8GB RAM and a 256GB SSD is around $800 to $1000 depending on the where you live. I don't even fully understand the whole M1, M2, M3 chip lineup. I'm a PC guy after all. But man, seeing 8GB of RAM and a 256GB SSD in a $1000 laptop makes my blood boil. And apparently it only has a 80Hz display with 1080p. Bro, for that price, people could literally build a beast of a gaming PC that would run any game, any program, no problem. Still, I want to be fair, if it costs that much, maybe it does make some sense. Only Apple users and Tim Cook seem to understand that logic. We PC and gaming laptop users are probably just too dumb to get it. And yeah, I know the gaming laptop crowd probably wants to kill me after that one video I made about laptops. But calm down, we're on the same team against Apple. Number 3. The battery life is actually insane. Even though I'm a PC user, I have this friend who's actually doing business stuff, and he literally never puts down his MacBook. One day I realized I've never seen him charged it. Like ever. I've never seen it plugged in, not once. Unlike gaming laptop users who are glued to a power outlet 24-7. So I got curious and started digging into MacBook battery life. I needed to know what kind of sorcery keeps them running that long. Do they have some sort of nuclear battery or what? How is Apple pulling this off while gaming laptops still struggling so hard? Turns out it's because of four main reasons. First, Apple uses ARM based chips like the M1, M2 and M3. These are kind of like phone chips. They're built more for efficiency than raw power, so they use way less energy while still being fast. Second, Apple controls every single component in their MacBooks. Unlike Windows laptops which rely on parts from all kinds of companies, CPUs from AMD or Intel, GPUs from Nvidia, RAM from someone else, Apple just makes everything themselves. That means they can fully optimize the whole system top to bottom. Third, macOS is just designed to chill. Unlike Windows, let's be honest, macOS is smoother, simpler and uses fewer background resources. It's built for minimalism and efficiency. On my PC, I open Task Manager and there's like 200 processes running that I don't even recognize. No wonder the battery drains so fast. 
Fourth, MacBooks don't need big fans or giant cooling systems. Apple's chips stay cool in their own. Some MacBooks don't even have fans at all, and the ones that do use tiny ones. That makes the laptop quieter and more power efficient. That's how Apple absolutely nails battery life. Number 4. You can't escape the ecosystem trap. The Apple ecosystem is a real trap. Once you're in, it's hard to get out. I say that because I get it. I already have an iPhone and I'm seriously about to buy a MacBook. By the way, in my last video about gaming laptops, I ended up glazing MacBooks more than I meant to. It just kind of happened. The thing is, Apple devices work together so perfectly, it's kind of scary. If you've got an iPhone, you can send photos or videos to your MacBook instantly without losing a single pixel. If you've got an iPad, you can use it as a drawing tablet for your Mac. No other brand really nails that kind of smooth integration and that's why so many people love it. But here's where it messes with you. Once you start getting used to that convenience, and I'm not talking just owning one iPhone like me. I mean, when you've got the whole lineup, MacBook, iPhone, AirPods, maybe even an iPad or Apple Watch, you feel like you need to keep buying more stuff just to stay in loop. It starts with an iPhone, then you get AirPods, then a MacBook, then you're eyeing on iPad you don't even need. Just to complete the set and keep that ecosystem magic going. And to be honest, you do feel great owning Apple products. There's a certain satisfaction to it. But if we are being real here, you've just dropped a few thousand dollars chasing a brand. And yeah, sometimes it's not even worth that much. But once you're in the trap, it's hard to leave. Even if you want to, it'll be painful. You're already used to how everything works so seamlessly. So you keep spending, maybe you get iCloud storage or that questionable Apple mouse, you get the idea. Number 5. It's fast, like uncomfortably fast. Let's take a break from the negatives and talk about something MacBooks genuinely do well. They are fast. And I mean really fast. I'm a Windows user and even I can admit this. I've never seen an operating system smoother or quicker than macOS. Yeah, I know, I said earlier that the base MacBook only has 8GB of RAM, but it still performs like a machine with 16GB. That's because it's built on a whole different system architecture. Like I explained earlier, everything just works, animations are smooth, editing doesn't lag, and over the performance is top tier. It boots up in about 5 seconds. Sure, some PCs boot faster, but it's different with macOS. It's like waking up your phone, just tap and it's ready. The SSD is insanely fast too. Apps open like regular files on Windows. And the biggest win for me, macOS handles buggy programs better than Windows. I've always struggled with Adobe apps crashing for no reason. It's not entirely Windows fault. Those programs are just buggy, but I've heard they crash way less often on MacBooks. That's the kind of experience that leaves a strong impression. Nothing lags, so even if you weren't planning on loving your MacBook, your brain starts going, damn, this might actually be worth it. Number 6. The resale value doesn't drop. Now, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. On the one hand, yeah, you can sell your MacBook years later and still get a decent chunk of money. But on the other hand, repairs, accessories, and services can cost you a lot. Apple knows you'll pay for it, and they charge you accordingly. Replace a screen or a battery? That's easily hundreds. And they rarely even drop those prices. Then there's the second-hand market. That's a whole other mess. People will post 6-year-old MacBooks for $900, like a 2016 MacBook Pro that still works fine, but maybe it's stuck on an old version of macOS, has 4GB of RAM, and dies after 1 hour of the charger. Just because the price stays high doesn't mean the quality does too. Still, if you ever get bored of macOS, you can sell your MacBook easily. That part's legit. In smaller countries, the price might even hold steady despite inflation or currency crashes. But again, it really depends on the person. Some people will call this a win, others see it as a scam. You decide. Number 7. You start justifying everything. Out of all the things I've said so far, this one hits hardest. MacBooks have a bunch of painful flaws, but you only really notice them once you're already deep into using it. Everything feels premium, but you start noticing what you're missing compared to a gaming laptop. There's no HDMI port on most models, no USB-A, which is still essential for a lot of people. Like for me, I use a Fifine A8 mic to record these videos. Great mic, affordable, but it needs a USB-A port. I even left the link in the description if anyone's interested. But yeah, you start realizing you can't just plug stuff in anymore. You buy this expensive laptop and suddenly you can't use your mouse. 
You can't plug in an external keyboard and you definitely can't upgrade your storage. Some people don't care about that and maybe I'm being a little dramatic. But if I don't mention this stuff, I already know I'm gonna catch heat in the comments. Trust me, it's happened before. And of course, gaming is basically off the table. Everyone knows that. That's one of the main reasons people hated MacBooks for years. But after 2020, people started realizing PCs aren't just for gaming. You can do serious works on them too. So yeah, no one's shocked MacBooks aren't for gaming. But the thing that always gets me, Apple users justify everything. No ports? I don't really need them. No games? I'm more of a productivity guy. But deep down, we all want to game. Games are fun, and eventually, if that craving hits hard enough, you're going back to Windows, the OS you spent years hating. Or maybe to a console. But in my opinion, PCs are still better than any console out there. So maybe the best move is this. Get a PC for gaming, and grab a used or a cheaper MacBook for work. That's probably the smartest setup. Anyway, if you made it this far, thanks for watching and take care.